This is Twit. Uh, you were talking about, you know, you should be able to choose your algorithms in some ways. And, and there's this assumption that, as, as it was in the mainframe age, you know, that all... Um, all serious computing happen only on the mainframe. And that's kind of our assumption about cloud right now. All the serious stuff is going to happen at the big, at the big operators because only they have all this money and all the, they have all these resources and only they can run algorithms. And only they could do AI and only they could do ML and only they can give you the, all this other stuff. And um, we've talked here before briefly, but like your thoughts on it, on what we call palgorithms, which are, which are ones for you and me. Um, I would like to be able to look at you know, all my property, all of my um, expenses, all of my health stuff, my truly personal data, not just the social stuff that's out there exposed to the world, but the private stuff that's mine that that can make connections between things in my life that are are important, but I may not even know that they're important or, you know, or that this is about to wear out or that subscription is about to run out or there might be a better deal in this subscription or, you know, but run algorithms of our own. And I'm wondering if Either you have any thoughts about that, or you know any work going on in that in that area. So the word palgorithm is new to me, but I love it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you made that up, but I, I'm I'm going to use think that. Actually, I actually actually my wife uh, Joyce, who you know, <laughs> I think is the one who came up with it. She's uh, uh, yeah, as she's usual, Joyce of, is is the brains of the outfit. <laughs> uh, no kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, we we have a problem, which is that a lot of the users we care about are running on phones, so they're not they're not going to do computationally intensive tasks on their phones. Just if if for battery life reasons, then you know more than anything else, whether you could support those people with, um, you know, freedom boxes with cloud infrastructure with kind of. And by cloud infrastructure, I mean, you know, like cheap VPS infrastructure where you could kind of do this on consumer budgets. I don't know. I mean, distributed algorithms, that's certainly a thing. But I, I actually think that a lot of the problems we want to solve don't require as much computational power as we currently think, right? ML is getting cheaper, but a lot of problems don't actually require machine learning. A lot of, a lot of the curation stuff that we want to do could be done with simple keyword searches. You know, like my my email is is sorted with with keywords. I don't have any complicated artificial intelligent thing working. I I, I see feeds of my email and, and I can slice and dice it based on topic, based on the things people talk about and and who is sending me various emails. And that's actually pretty effective. The chances of of us doing meaningful curation um, and other types of sorting and filtering without a ton of machine learning, I, I think there's actually a lot of hope for that. And if you give people places to plug in, if you give them the ability to innovate specifically on that question where they don't have to build the entirety of the rest of the ecosystem um, because it's already being built in a decentralized fashion and they can kind of plug in a project just like this, that starts to become a plausible area for research. You could sort of see grad students working on that. You can sort of see hackers working on that. And so I, I don't know anyone who is currently working on palgorithms. I'm going to keep using that word until I find somebody who, who decides to work on it. I think that's brilliant. And I think if we want to bring control closer to users, we don't necessarily need to emulate the specific solutions that people have developed to run on big iron we can identify solutions that are more adapted to running in environments with less RAM, less battery, less computation. And that, that might be the way to kind of bring stuff closer to users and also to make it more comprehensible, right? Uh, earlier, we, we mentioned that these algorithms are difficult to understand and maybe even the, the engineers who, who are kind of operating them don't fully understand them. But if we avoid those systems and replace them with things that are lighter weight, those lighter weight things might be easier to understand. So I don't, you know, I don't know that we are dependent on artificial intelligence and I don't know what palgorithms might look like. Maybe they will encompass machine learning, but they could also get pretty far with a lot less. That being said, one of the things that I think we could do in a more decentralized world is 
provide services where, you know, the, that computationally expensive thing might be the thing that happens in the cloud and you buy that as a service and you're not actually uh, forced to run everything else on that same service. You're not forced to buy all your other social media um, service from that same provider. The, the nice thing about giving people lots of ways to hook things up is when they need that kind of complexity, they can go get it. When they need that kind of support, they can go get it. And it doesn't force them to drag the entirety of the rest of their online experience over there. So I, th I think that's one of the benefits of decentralized decentralization is the ability to pick and choose. Okay, a couple of things. One is uh, Joyce is texting me saying, as you're speaking, saying, yes, right. <laughs> and uh, and also adding, algorithms can be written with 100 lines of code if it's not on the major platform. 